Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Midnight Fright Cast, Episode 9. This is Patrick, your host for the evening, and joining me in the basement studio is Josh. Almost to double digits. And joining us on a Radio Shack Audio Technic walkie talkie from the 1984 <laughs> is uh, Greg. Say hello, Greg. <laughs> Uh, breaker Breaker 112 <laughs> on the Radio Shack, not the store, but an actual shack with a radio. <laughs> Over. All right. Hey, it's been a couple weeks since we met. Uh, we've been a little busy. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, what we've done or what we've seen over the past couple of weeks. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk about a little movie called The Monster. Yeah. And then after that, we're going to go into talking about some uh, best surprise plot twists in horror movies that we uh, that we uh, each one of us is going to give our our I don't know. I wrote down like seven of them. I'm sure Josh only wrote down two. Yeah, I wrote down a couple. Yeah, see, you know, that we know that that's how the formula works around here. So we're going to start <laughs> off with the, uh, you know, what have you been watching or doing since the last podcast? Hey, are we going to pick on Greg tonight or does somebody else want to go first? No, I think we're picking on Greg. <laughs> I, I would like to vote somebody else goes first because I'm looking up what I've been watching. Yeah, I'll doing. go. I'll go. Are you sure? Because <laughs> yeah. otherwise I could if you're still looking stuff up. Uh, no, I was just looking up something for the monster. Oh, all right. Well, then, then go right I ahead. can't read my own handwriting. Um, so... Um, watched, uh, I continued my journey through the Halloween Xbox, uh, through the Halloween box set. So I <laughs> knocked out Halloween four and five. Um, you almost said Xbox. I know we were talking about Xbox <laughs> earlier, so <laughs> I caught myself. So I knocked out, uh, Halloween four and five, uh, which was the introduction of Jamie, um, which were, I think for like uh, the ones that she comes into, I think are some of my favorite. Um, so, uh, I, I knocked out those, um, now I can't think of the damn actor's name and she's like one of my favorites and I can't think of her dad, the girl that played Jamie. I can't think of her name now. It's bugging the crap out of me. But Jamie anyway. Lee Curtis? No. No, uh, Jamie. So, sorry. Um, uh, Jamie, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Maurice sorry. daughter and four and five. Uh, and now I can't think, I had it and I, now I can't I know exactly her. who you're talking about. I can't think of her name um, either. So that's going to bother me. So that's a good start on the, the old, the old fry cast. Um, so I knocked out those. I knocked out uh, Wrong Turn one and two. I just was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I bought the uh, the double disc a while back, and I was just like, I was staring at it for a while, and then one night I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna bust them out. I'm gonna watch them both, and I as I might as well have watched The Hills Have Eyes one and two because it's the same movie, but. <laughs> And I remember like not liking these movies at all. And then I rewatched them. I'm like, they're not really that. I mean, they're bad, but they're not unwatchable. So Daniel Harris, God damn it. That was going to bother me. Um, I was just writing it down for you. Yeah. Daniel Harris, uh, who's like all over the place. So I watched those. And then Greg will be surprised to hear that I watched a documentary, a non, I watched a non horror film this week, a documentary called be here now which was um, about the um, the original guy that played I'm playing I'm doing terribly on names tonight so uh, uh, I said I'm hashtag winning uh, the original actor who I'm gonna look up now that played Andy Whitfield that played Spartacus in the series did you watch that Patrick I never got around to seeing the series okay. no <clears throat> it's super good but the original guy that played Spartacus uh, after season one, between season one and two, he got uh, non-Hoskins lymphoma, and he went through um, chemotherapy between season one and two, went into remission, and then right before they were supposed to start shooting season two, it came back. And they did this whole thing where they were waiting for him, so they did a prequel, and he never got better, and he ended up passing away. But it was his journey. He like documented his journey of starting... Of, of getting Spartacus and going through the motions and getting sick and his journey through trying to get better um, and be cancer. And it was like one of those movies that Greg, you know, we talked about doing a, a podcast where we were, we were going to talk about movies that made you cry. Yes. Get fucking baby at the end of this movie. Wow. It was crazy. And like, there's only, and there's like, uh, there's a song at the end of it during the credits that only, there's only one other movie that I was like, pouring um and that was philadelphia 
the song, the credit song at the end was just like, just like a, a punch to the gut. Um, but it's on Netflix. It's super good. And mm-hmm. uh, so I checked that out. I don't remember if I uh, mentioned that I saw Get Out on the last podcast. So I think it was after the last podcast. Uh, my wife and I went and saw Get Out. And we're going to do a podcast on that. So I'm not going to talk about it too much other than it's freaking awesome. And then I wrapped my week up last night. Um, I have a go-to uh, movie when I don't have anything else to watch. And I watched the remake of Dawn of the Dead, which is one of my favorites. So that is what I have been watching. All right, Greg, let's, let's move on over to you then. All right, I'm ready this time. Um, I personally haven't been watching too much, as much as I'd like to have been anyways. It's been a really busy last couple of weeks. Um, Emily and I just finished watching uh, Friends again on a, uh, a loop. So that was about there. It's been a couple of years since I've actually watched the entire series. And I, just, I forget how much I love that series, but it's great to revisit and go back and uh, and have fun with your friends. So, um, along with that, I've been, uh, watching, uh, NCIS. They've got all the seasons up on, uh, Netflix. And so during a, uh, a certain time, which shall be unannounced, I, uh, go through episodes of NCIS and, uh, enjoy some, some really good, uh, police, pro- pro- wow. Can I talk police procedural type shows? So that's really about all that I've been watching. Other than that, I was uh, part of that Ghost Hunter shoot last weekend. Looking to finish uh, this weekend, we had a, a great time. One of the best shoots I've been a part of. Really excited to see how this is going to come together. So uh, that's really about all that's been on my book. All right. Well, I'm going to segue into what I was doing uh, since the last podcast because uh, having directed or in the middle of directing uh, ghost hunters for for this group. Uh, I pretty much had my nose down in the notebook trying to figure out what I wanted to do, putting together shot lists and everything else for it. And then this past weekend, um, you know, it, 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 you always you always want things to go extremely smooth. We had a couple of hangups, but still, I think this is one of the best projects we've worked on together yeah, uh, <laughs> in the past two years. Things went pretty smooth. Uh, yes, we did get stuck in an elevator for a little while. Yes. That one was not our fault. That was not our fault. The belt <laughs> fell off the drum on the mechanics of the whole thing. We we're stuck. It wasn't too long, though. It was only about, what, a half hour at most? Half hour. 20 minutes, yes, half we hour bonded. Yeah, and tr- yes, we all bonded. I thought <laughs> I thought Mark was going to actually shit himself though. He was he was getting pretty worked yeah, up. Yeah, he went about that elevator. Um, but no, I worked with some really great people. Uh, working with some new talent this time. A couple yeah. people I've never worked with before. Uh, in that sense. Um, and, and we'll be following this up with another podcast where it's just going to be us and the, and the cast, uh, or at least the, the main member of the cast, Andrea Erickson. I'm going to give a quick shout out to her because she did such a terrific job this last weekend that, uh, I just, I, she's, we saw her in a couple of things last year at Prairie Lights Film Festival. I got yeah. to see her working on Corrupter with, uh, with, uh, unfiltered entertainment. And I, once we read the script, I said, this is who I want for this. And she, I was very happy that she accepted the yeah. role and we were able to work it out. Uh, I'm glad that we're giving ourselves enough time to get this movie finished before Prairie Lights Film Festival yeah. because there's some technical aspects of it that yeah. we really got to take care of. So uh, we're finishing that up this weekend. But um, I just got to say that I, I was really proud of what we did this last weekend, yeah. regardless of what the end product is. I think that we did some really nice uh, filming. Yeah. Just, we, we created art this last weekend, yeah, so was, I'm really looking forward to this project. I think easily from the uh, beginning of Midnight Frights, this was, till now, this was easily the best shoot we had. Uh, definitely the most organized, but the the best looking, I think, shoot we've done. Yeah. And especially on our equipment, you know, we don't have yeah. top of the line equipment and uh, yeah. we, we still manage to do some really cool stuff. Yeah. So... Uh, so that, that's what I've been doing. Uh, I, I, I'm sure I watched a movie in there somewhere, but I just, yeah. you know, when you get things going on, you just can't remember crap like that. I think so. this is the first time we've gotten on the Frycast and talked about what we've been watching. And I had the most, Oh, I, I had the biggest <laughs> list. I usually have like, I watched two things I watched and Greg two. watched 15. Right. This week it was like. I somehow I won out. So. Yeah, no, I I think the most I watched was probably like eight 
episodes of cops because it happened to be on while I was working on other yeah. things, <laughs> you know, and, but I did watch one movie and that movie was the monster. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. And that's the movie we're going to be discussing tonight. And, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to give the synopsis here real quick yeah. as we always do and give some, uh, some ratings. All right. The monster. A divorced mother and her headstrong daughter must make an emergency late-night road trip to see the girl's father. As they drive through deserted country roads on a stormy night, they suddenly have a startling collision that leaves them shaken but not seriously hurt. Their car, however, is dead, and as they try in vain to get help, they come to realize they are not alone on these desolate back roads. A terrifying evil is lurking in the surrounding woods, intent on never letting them leave. Tomato meter, 78%. Audience rating, 39%. IMDb, 5.3. Metascore, 69%. For an overall average of 60%. I uh, think it's low. Anybody, anybody I, comment on the percentage first? I think, well, I think it depends on how you view the movie. If okay. you're looking at this movie as a pure horror film... I think it's probably about right. If yeah, you're looking okay. at this movie at what it truly is, I think it's low. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I, I did watch it from the horror perspective. Um, well, no, I went in there with the intention of watching it from the horror perspective, be, just because based on who the director is also, because um, Brian Bertino, Brian directed Bertino. This. Yep. he directed one of my favorite films like ever. It's a, another go-to film. He directed The Strangers yes. and then he directed... Mockingbird, which I have not seen. Did you watch Mockingbird? I have not seen it. Okay. For some reason, I watched. I thought you watched Mockingbird. But those were his two first outings um, before he took on. Wait, Mockingbird. Uh, is that with the clown? Yeah. The, the, yes, yeah. yes. The three different stories tied yeah, yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, Right. You talked about that, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I did like that one. Um, so those were his first two outings before he, he got in and did the monster. Um, I'm just going to go real quick, uh, just out of the gate comments. Uh Two fairly unknown actresses. I didn't know them from a lot of things. Uh, Zoe Kazan, she was in Savages with Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um, and then the young girl, uh, Ella, or Ella Ballantine, didn't really have too many credits to her name. Um, but they were fantastic. And uh, this was, uh, just from a, a production standpoint... I talk a lot about, and going to just back to Ghost Hunters too, we talk a little bit about if, as a micro budget filmmaker, small cast, single location is like the, I think, gold standard you can have as a micro budget filmmaker. And that's what this was. And I thought, as long as they had a great story, and I thought they did, uh, this kind of thing works. Right. Cause they basically had two locations. They had the roadside with yeah. a few cars. Yep. And then they had the house. The house. Yeah. And that was it. So who, uh, um, uh, thought, so we talked about a little bit about this before, but so they do a lot of flip flopping. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, the real monster, I said this last time, the real monster in this movie was alcoholism. Um, there is an actual monster in this movie, but they do a lot of, uh, back and forth um, stuff in the movie. And they, they focus a lot on the mother's alcoholism and uh, how she becomes kind of a monster mm -hmm. when she drinks. Um, I don't necessarily think that, you know, she was the monster, but alcoholism in itself was the monster. Yeah. I, I really believe that the creature was a metaphor in this movie. So that's why I was saying that if you go into it thinking that it's a pure horror movie, yeah, you're going to, you're not going to like all the cut scenes, the flashbacks and stuff like that, because yeah. it doesn't help that part of the story. Not at all. But it helps the character development. Exactly. Which some people apparently don't like character development. They really don't like that. We learned that with a review this last <laughs> I I couple of days. It, but some people complain <laughs> that there's no character development. And then some people go, there's too much. So just from the energy at the table, I'm thinking Josh and I like this movie. And we haven't quite heard from Greg yet. So, Greg? Greg says... The movie was good. Um, I'm I'm gonna follow the the path of the the character development was was good, but it really took me out of what I felt was the meat of the movie. Um, I I really wish that they would have done the 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 scenes where the mom and the boyfriend are yelling and screaming at the young girl 
I really wish they would have done that a little bit differently just because I was pulled so far out of that film when those things came out that the movie felt like it was, it was a drama and a horror movie. And you're basically trying to put oil and water and mesh them together. And I think that was the hardest thing that I had with this entire film was I, I would get into the scenes where they're stuck in the car and there's something out there that's hunting and stalking them. And all of a sudden we're going to flash back to, Oh, mom needs a, a bottle of vodka, but she's not going to get it. But her daughter's going to run out to the trash can and find an empty bottle of vodka or a secret bottle of vodka or whatever that was. That was that movie, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and you did hit on a point there. It was my second bullet point that says to me, this was more of a drama with horror elements. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what you just said. Right. And I, that's, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. And the, the drama part of it didn't do much for me. I felt like if the movie was, well, not was, but if it could kind of turn which way it was going to go, if it was more drama, I think it would have been on the right track. However, if it would have been more horror and stayed on the horror path, I think it could have, it did well with what it was trying to do on that end. Um, I think the best thing that the, the movie has going for it, just kind of on the surface level, I know you guys talked about alcoholism being the monster. Yeah. Um, the, the actual monster in the film I love the entire setup of it. Um, I felt like it was it was that slow pot boil uh, setup to really bring the monster about. You show how ferocious and how terrifying it is, and you don't really get to see much of it except for little silhouettes and little hints in here and there. And it, it was almost to a point where I was hoping that there was a few more kills just to kind of see how much more intense this thing could get. But I think that was probably the best thing that the movie actually had going for it, which solid work on the title just changed the story a little bit. The practical effects, too. It was all practical. They built the monster. That was huge, yes. Right. No CGI, so yeah. that was nice, that too. Was but to me, the the back and forth worked. And uh, for this, it doesn't usually work, I don't think, in horror films. To me, it worked in this movie a little bit as a, as <clears throat> a redemption for the mother as far as, mm -hmm. like, we show – how big of a problem she had and then what she does, the sacrifice she makes at the end of the movie for her daughter. And that's a little bit of a redemption for me. I don't think you would have, that would have been as big if you didn't have this part over right. here. Right. And, and not only her sacrificing herself, they were able to put in a scene in there prior to that, that, that uh, scene where they were laying underneath the covers or under a tent. I can't remember what it was, yeah, but they, yep, yep. Yep. And she, even though they were not connecting, they did connect and she did, was able to say how much she loved her yeah. and everything else. And I, 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 it almost seemed like the, the cutscenes, the flashbacks, whatever was setting up what was happening next. I mean, cause it yeah. was almost parallel the entire yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, something would happen in their real life and then something would happen in this creature life, you know, in reality. Yeah. Type yeah. Thing. Yeah. So I mean you're you're right you're right Greg as far as like it generally it will take me out of that like that kind of thing will take mm -hmm. me out of a movie if it continuously happens for this movie it, for me it it worked in breaking up it was it was a little bit like the the last movie that we watched uh, Frailty where there was the constant jumping back and forth yeah, and yeah. flashbacks and that and it was just it was it was rough a mm. little bit of a rough cut so and, and but, a, yeah and a lot of the reviews that I read that that was probably the biggest uh, con to the show was that they, they just didn't like the flashbacks and things like that. And I think, uh, but once again, I think it's how you approach the movie itself. Yeah, yeah. And if you're approaching it from a horror aspect, of course you're not going to like that. Yeah. If you just want straight blood kills and just mayhem, this is not your movie. No, no. You can cut out all the rest uh, of those scenes. You need to have a nice short. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, but cause it it's, didn't, it's a Go it's ahead. a slow burn film, which yeah. is awesome. I think that's yeah. that's one of the best type of horror films is the slow burns. Speaking of slow burn, I love the music. It kept everything going here. It was like the solo piano over the synthesized monotone. It just really kept that suspense, that tension going throughout this thing. Yeah. Um, I, and I, I listened to it with my headphones on. So mm -hmm. I was able to hear like every subtle creature sound and everything else. I just think that the sound oh, nice. editing on this movie was really good. Uh, yeah, they they did just did a really good job with that. It says that that makes or breaks your movie. It sure does. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I give I give uh, I give Monster a giant thumbs up. I, I I didn't know what to expect 
when I picked it up, but uh, that's a rewatchable movie yeah. for me. So cinematography wise, I thought the pictures Great. were really good. Oh, yeah. beautiful. I wrote, beautiful. I wrote down that I wish I had his equipment because I mean, they were shooting in almost complete, no in complete darkness. Complete it was like, darkness, yeah. it was like the headlights. It was rain, the rain. They, they were throwing lights through. There was a light from the top of the tow truck and yeah. then the ambulance lights. And they, I mean, they basically had no lights whatsoever, but they got beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pictures yeah. from this show. And I always liked the light through the rain stuff. I yeah. always think that's, yeah. A uh, couple nice jump scares. Yeah. I mean, it, but it didn't rely on it. Yeah. Um, the only one I can really remember right now is the, the arm falling onto the hood of the car. Are we giving spoilers? This was a 2016 movie. Uh, not, I mean, well, we just did. We just so did. We didn't give the end away though. No. Kind of. Not uh, really. Yeah, yeah kind of. Kind yeah. of we did. Spoil it. Oops. Well, we've ruined that. So. Um, <laughs> and oh, well. acting wise, I thought that, I thought the mother and the daughter were really, yeah. really good, especially yeah. the girl. And it kind of had flashbacks of, uh, Dakota Fanning for yeah. me just a little bit, just having a young person who can understand relationships and understand how to really communicate that with the other person. And I didn't know if it was a matter of the roles fitting the actors well, or the actors, actors being able to fit those roles well, but it was, they had really, to me, they had really, really good chemistry. Yeah. They uh, fit together really well. I think they worked a lot on that uh, before they actually started filming. They hung out a lot. There's a lot of uh, um, uh, like kind of bonding, bonding time. Yeah, time yeah. before they shot so they could get that connection on screen. And I think that helped one of the, quite a bit. Yeah, one of the scenes that really solidified the relationship between the two of them for me was when they're standing in the garage. And the mother's, oh, just, yeah. the mother's just saying, fuck you, yeah, fuck you, fuck you. Movie, yeah. Rough, uh, definitely an incredibly rough scene. Yeah. And the daughter's like, you can't say that to me. You can't say that to me. And the mom leaves and, and then the daughter just screams it at her. Yeah. And I'm just going, that was, a, it really said what that relationship was right then and yeah. there. Um, a lot of people panned the writing on it. But I think, I think he was able to take a very simple plot idea and make it into something more than what yeah. it was. Again, if we're if we're getting reviews from horror film fans, I would never say they're wrong because your opinion is your opinion. Mm-hmm. But like you said out of the gate, if you're watching this as a horror film fan, then it's not going to be <clears throat> your cup of tea. Right. If you if you don't want to care about characters, then this is the wrong movie to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, that, I think that's probably why there was such a disparity on on Rotten Tomatoes, where the critics were given it almost eighty percent, yeah, and it was cut in half by the audience. <clears throat> yeah, um, you know that I think the audience was expecting horror. I mean, you go to a movie that's named the monster and look at the movie cover too, <laughs> and you look at the yeah. cover which has the silhouette yeah. of you're, the monster. You're not getting yeah. fluffy bunnies and kittens, right? No, right, and you know it ended up being a lot about the relationship and less about the creature. So. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think that was probably part of the reason for the, the scoring that it gets. Yeah. So, so last thoughts, thumbs up, thumbs down. Would you recommend it uh, to a friend? Out of 10, Greg. Out of 10, I'd probably give it a six. Okay. It was, it's, oh, I think it's a one-time watchable. Uh, I just, I feel like the, they just, they couldn't decide if they wanted it to be drama or horror. And that really just kind of took you out of it. But if, if you go in with, an open mind and you're looking for some good horror shots, I think you'll get them. So I'll give it a six. Cool. Patrick got a 10. I will give it an eight. However, I do agree that uh, with Greg, that is probably a one-time watch. Uh, And as a filmmaker or an aspiring filmmaker or whatever I consider myself at this point, um, I am a filmmaker. I've made a film Um, (laughs) that it is something I would probably go back and look at because of the cinematography. We've all agreed oh, that yeah. the cinematography in this is really, really good. And I think he's built up tension really, really well. So I think this is something I will probably revisit, but I don't know that other people will. So I'm going eight out of 10. I'm going to ride the middle. I'm going to go seven. And uh, for me, it's going to sit on my shelf, but it will be a, uh, I'll totally rewatch that movie. So seven for me. All right. Cool. cool. And I, and I definitely will recommend it to other people. Yeah. So. All right, we got another movie in the bag. So we're, let's move on to our next section, which is uh, 
This one was kind of tough for me because I can only think of like one or two and I kind of had to go to the internet uh, to to remember some of You're these things. You're not alone. Um, so the internet. The internet. The interwebs. Um, but we wanted to discuss the best surprise plot twists in horror movies that, yeah. that we can remember from growing up in our past or anything that we've seen recently or anything like that. So uh, Josh went first last time, so I think Greg's going to go first now. And he's prepared. All right. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Let's see how many so, he knocks off our list, Patrick. Exactly. I've only got five listed on here, so you're safe. I've got eight. Josh had <laughs> three. Josh probably I've got, got I've got six. Oh, he's got six. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Get your heart um, out. I got six. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, so, one, I bet um, one of them is on every one of our lists. Yeah, probably. Oh, there yeah. easily, easily has to be. Um, I, I too, Patrick went onto the interwebs because I knew of a couple, but I wanted to make sure I got all the ones that I wanted to put on there. Um, I also didn't know if I was going to be going first or last. So I wanted to make sure I had something to talk about. Oh, there you go. So, uh, one of the first ones that I have on here is the movie psycho. And I think it's probably one of the epitome, uh, <laughs> here we sorry, go. Guys. Checking them off, checking them off. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably one of the, one of the highest, best film twists of in cinematic history i mean it's probably definitely one of the earliest oh yeah right yeah yeah yeah. so i i don't know that i can say too much more about it because if you don't know psycho what rock are you living under um following that oh yeah we should probably say do we say these what what the twist is i mean um some of these there's no way i would say what the twist is because they're new um okay and then I think but all of you, mine are old enough. But Psycho, if you want to see the twist, go to it. It's a classic. It's a classic movie. Yeah. They like said, if you don't know Psycho, go watch a movie or something. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not give that one away. Because if you haven't seen Psycho, you should see Psycho. You should see Psycho. You should see the Vincent D'Onofrio Psycho. No. Vincent Vaughn Psycho. Vincent Vaughn. I was no, going to say. No. It is that. the better of the two. It is not. <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. Fun fact, I wasn't a fan of either side. A shot for shot shit fest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, next on my list was a movie that I, I've been needing to go back and rewatch because the first time I saw it, it was so hyped for me that it was kind of ruined. And that movie was Saw. Damn oh, it. Mother God. fucker. I, we knew this was coming. Wait, yeah. <laughs> um. When I went and saw this movie, everybody was out there telling me, you have to go see Saw. It's a great horror movie. You got to go see it. Got to go see it. I went and saw it, and my mind was just expecting amazing, absolutely amazing, and I was flattened by it. I did not think it was as good as it was going to be. I was also not as into film as I am now, so it's been on my list. I need to go back. I need to rewatch it because it is, I consider it horror classic material it's a holy shit kind of twist right and that's that's why i put it on there because i remember when the end scene came and what happened happened do we say it or not oh Fuck. go ahead it's old enough when, yeah. it's old enough. <laughs> we're over 10 years we're safe i think um when three. when the guy got up who you thought was dead i had no idea i was completely blown away by that and so that to me is it's a memorable thing and should be on the list of best horror twists. Um, following that up, I'm actually going to follow it with a movie that I have never seen. I'm only doing this because I'm several miles away and can't be beaten down by either of you guys. Jerk. <laughs> the movie is seven. Oh, oh okay. yeah. that's not on my list. No, not on my list at all. <laughs> I don't know if you can consider it horror. I think it walks. Yeah, I, I think yeah. you, I think you definitely could. It rides, it rides Again, that line. Rides that line. I haven't seen it in its entirety. I've seen the final scene. And so that was why I put it on the list was because of that scene. And I thought how they worked everything together to that culmination was an ideal or was an awesome, uh, awesome idea for a twist. That was the first movie I ever watched that I felt like I needed to take a shower after yeah. watching. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this next movie <laughs> I actually, I, I hated this movie, but I wanted to put it on here because of the surprise ending that made me laugh. That movie was 2007's The Mist. Okay. That's not on my list either. Okay. So, I didn't go it? to the internet though, so. 
There's some I, clearly I'm going to miss. I wrote that one down thinking that I would have to have one that maybe you didn't. And then I just now scratched it off after having written it down. My bad. Um, no, I, the movie wasn't really one of my favorites. It, it had the makings of a good horror film. But again, I included it because I, the ending was funny to me. How stupid it was. Um 2007 is 2017 yeah fuck it we'll spoil it the the when uh the main character i don't remember his name or who he played or who played him thomas jane um, was it thomas jane yes oh okay nice um when he when he offed the uh the people in the car including his son had he not just waited that extra 30 seconds or five minutes or two minutes or whatever it was to realize oh everything's gonna be okay it's it was funny because it's like, how fucking stupid are you? Now, Frank Darabont took a pay cut for that ending. Really? He took a pay cut and fought for that ending. He said, yeah. the only way, he said, I want, this is the ending. that It has to be this ending. I will, You can cut my pay and and let me have it. And But it has to be this ending. Because the well, ending is, is different based, in the story. Yeah, I was going to say, it was based on a Stephen, a Stephen King novel, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So what? What was the end of the story then? I honestly have never read it, so I don't know the nope. original ending. It has been probably two decades, three decades since I've read that short story. Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's different, fine. and he fought hard for that. Yeah, for that ending, which seems weird from coming from Frank Darabont. I mean, he's he knows what he's doing, but <clears throat> to each his own. So, um, yeah, I know you got to suspend disbelief in movies, but that was one of those like, come on, really, really, really. So I threw that on there. I also want to give honorable mention to the movie The Village, which I absolutely hated because of the twist. I will, I was ready to hunt M. Night Shyamalan down and punch him in the throat for that. Ending. I'm right there with you. <clears throat> so, I, I, um, I like last <laughs> but not least, and I know it's going to be on both your lists, was the movie The Sixth Sense. Yeah. Now, I have not seen that, so do not give out the ending. I swear to God. Don't. <laughs> Just don't. Just don't. <laughs> I'm out. I will say, I will say that though, uh, we weren't able to see it until like it was almost out of theaters and nobody said anything to me. That was probably one of the best kept secrets wow. of movie history wow. like That's for impressive. me personally. So yeah, it did come as a total shock but, to me. I mean, do you, did you normally have people that would tell you endings of stories or things like that? Because that movie came out in 99 well, and, I had a friend that spoiled the ending of Logan for me, and I haven't seen that yet. So, I did uh, no such thing. Not you. Okay. There's another person. <laughs> so, uh, I do have people in my life that no, are yeah, yeah, assholes I, I, and do that. Yeah. But yeah. see, that this was this came out in '99, and I don't remember there being as much fan fandom and yeah. the internet and stuff like yeah. that. Right. That right. Time, so that helped. <clears throat> no, that one completely caught me off guard. So, yeah. right. uh, Josh, what if we like go back and forth because we'll probably knock a couple off of each other's and I don't want to <laughs> leave like one of us with just one. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Um, Do you want to go first? Yeah. Well, since Greg took these two, I'm just going to throw it out there. M. Night Shyamalan is the king of the horror twist. So he is the guy. If you're looking for a horror twist. I'm not saying the great horror twist, Greg. I see that smile on your face. We can knock it off right now. I, well, I, I M. Say, Night I Shyamalan king. is the king of the horror twist. Okay. I would use. I would still use King lightly. Well, I'm going to say King, and I'll tell you why. Because you mentioned The Sixth Sense, which is one of the greatest plot twists in horror films ever. I would the give village. You, that. you also mentioned The Village. The Village he dropped. And if you have not seen Split, you need to go see Split. I know I need to. Um, because M. Night Shyamalan is back with that movie. I don't know. I don't There's know if it was so much a, a twist, twist. But there is a nice little There's a like, surprise. Yeah. But I'm going to count that. Okay. So M. Night but, Shyamalan. Okay, so along with, along with the two, maybe three good ones, because I've never seen Unbreakable, but oh. I've heard that's a decent one. <laughs> Throw up. Um, yeah. Okay, okay, so he's got two decent ones with Split and... Sixth Sense. If you're talking horror twist. Now, I like Lady in the Water. I was a fan of that movie. There's no twist okay. in it, but I'm a fan of that movie. Okay. Um, the Awakening, God Awful. The Village, God Awful. Devil, decent, but not great. Devil was watchable. Avatar. Av uh. <laughs> the, the Last what's Airbender. Just, the Last just, Airbender, yeah. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good Avatar: call. The Last Airbender. That remember that twist at the end where when people thought that? it was good. <laughs> yeah, I just give that one. But yes, so, I still I will give the king his crown and uh, he's, just drop M Night Shyamalan he's, as he's got a he's got a giant he plot twist king himself out of. I almost said a really, really dirty word on this. Did you catch it? No, I didn't. Okay, you're going to catch it in the end. Okay, probably. It would have been, <laughs> that would have been bad if I would have finished that word. I'll have to put a beep in there or something. <laughs> now, Greg, I think you'll really like Split. I just. Oh, I yeah, I've heard good things about it, and I, I really do want to see it, but I'm just, I'm still gun shy anytime, anytime M. Night Shyamalan comes out with something new. Go All ahead, right. Patrick. Good. Um, I'm going to throw the ring out there. Because she's doing all these things thinking that Samara has been treated horribly. And it, every horror film where you're dealing with ghosts or whatever spirits that something bad has happened to them, you bring them peace and then yeah. they, everything's they good. Leave you alone, yeah. Okay. She thought she was bringing this young girl peace. Mm-hmm. And then you realize she just released the most evil in the world yeah. at it. And I, to me, that was a twist because the ring, it, you said the ring. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I would have never even thought about that. that yeah. Movie, Cause, cause to me that it, it just, I never thought of that, you know, cause here she's going along. And going, oh, okay. Here's the end of the movie. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Okay. I got wow, you. This, yeah. this chick is evil. And rings too. Do you, you want to get haunted? Because that's how you get haunted. Yeah. The rings had a great plot twist at the end. I thought. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And also the the end of the ring is is you know it passes it on. Someone puts that mm-hmm. tape somewhere in the he yep. puts the tape in the middle of the video store and she's like oh. oh, oh, oh. So that was a smart way to uh, that was a smart smart marketing, way to, marketing move. exactly to build to go, up well, your. If we want to make more. Yeah. This is how it can keep going. Yeah. Um, Greg said saw, so I'm going to let that one go for the most part. Is it, but but that was a moment where I stood up in the theater and it was like, holy shit. So I'm glad we put the explicit content thing on oh, this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my language, <laughs> I just can't control it. I, I think I, Greg I and I have been dropping F-bombs this entire time. Oh, so. good for you Fuck guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, see, there we go. Um, but saw was definitely <laughs> like, oh, my God. Like, mm-hmm. it was, I loved it. So it, beginning, middle, end, and every time I watch that movie, it's just like, Perfection for me. So, but uh, a movie that has not been mentioned, uh, and I only have two left. So, High Tension. Anybody? The anybody seen High Tension? You loaned it to me, and I've yet to watch it. Oh, have you seen High Tension? I don't believe I have. It's so. You, I'll give it to you. All it's right. super good. Um, the whole movie, you think, just this is happening, and I, I don't want to drop anything because you guys haven't seen it. But you get to the end, and it's just like, I don't think you see it coming. I'm a big fan of that movie. It is a foreign film, uh, but it does have English subtitles. On, or has, it's, it's redubbed in English. Um, great movie. High tension. Check it out. Great plot twist. So that's my next one. I'm going to throw out there Angel Heart. I have not seen that movie. Really? De Niro? Uh, De Niro, right? Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke. And De Niro. De Niro's in oh, it. Oh, De Niro's in, in it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mickey works the main character. De Niro okay. plays the devil. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So to speak. Um, but at the end, you find out that it's the same person. Okay. And I just spoiled I would, it for yeah, you. Yeah, you did, because I would have checked I just, it out. I just said that, and yeah. I'm looking at you going, oh, you, crap. You looked directly did you see, did you see, me, did like, see the look at Did you see the look at my yeah. eyes going, oh, shit, I just gave just that so away you know, to you. It's the so, exact same person. So, uh, yeah, so, Josh, you don't have to watch that movie now, <laughs> unless you want to see some incredible Lisa Bonet scenes. Uh, sure. Yeah. Angel Heart, Lisa Bonet. Yeah. She was from Cosby, right? She was from Cosby, and that's yeah. why she was not on Cosby Wasn't for a while. Wasn't she married to Lenny Kravitz for a while? I don't know. I think she was. Yeah. No, she got booted off that show because she did Angel Heart with the sex scenes and all the yep. other stuff. Yeah. Angel Heart. Um, Angel no, she I'm not going to write that one down. Yeah. <laughs> so I I will publicly apologize on air here for giving away that when you said, Sorry. I need to catch that. And I went, yeah. oh, crap. Uh, it's a big giant. By the oh, way, yeah, let me tell you. you. Let me tell you about Logan. <laughs> yes, that's not. Because I'm going to see that Monday. For sure, 100%. Hey, I'm seeing that. Hey, Monday. Josh. In Titanic, the boat sinks. You fucker. You know, if <laughs> if you watch Titanic backwards, it's about a magical boat that saves a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think Titanic has the greatest plot twist ever. So, uh, 
my last one, my very last one, and uh, again, one of my favorite movies. Uh, it's a go-to movie for me, and I think the greatest plot twist, minus the Shyamalan stuff on my list, is uh, Primal Fear with uh, Richard Gere and Edward Norton. Anybody Ooh. see it? Mm-mm. You haven't seen Primal Fear? I have not. Have you seen Primal Fear? It sounds familiar. It's uh, Richard Gere plays the lawyer that defends... It's like Edward Norton's first movie. Right. Yes, he, he yes, 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 yes. And it gets all the way to the end, yeah. and you're like... Greg, you got. I'll give you Primal Fear too, man, because I hope you have a VCR though, because that's all I got. I got it on VHS. Um, I, have should, a, I have a 13 inch VCR TV combo. Yeah, it's worth it. You should. <laughs> yeah, you can fit that under your desk at work. Can't yeah, you? yeah, yeah. I could. I could. <laughs> it's totally appropriate for work too. Uh, Primal Fear has got a great it's, plot twist. Okay. It's not so. going to be as bad as some that I've watched. No, it's it's actually a really not only a great plot twist but a really good movie, um, all together. So. Primal Fear is the last one on my list. I've got two more to add. Uh, one of them is a John Cusack movie, Identity. It was great. That's a great movie. Yeah, I did like, you Identity know, because, great. yep, because you think all these people are real and it ends up, it's not so much real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to give a spoiler on that one because we all agree that's a good movie and maybe people mm-hmm. should go see that one. Um, and my last one is Friday the 13th. Yeah, that is a good, yeah, that is a good it is good because twist. you expect yep. someone's been doing the killing all the yep. way along and it ends up not being that person. Yeah. You know what? Mommy. It's yeah, Jason's mommy. mom. Jason's case, mom. Spoiler alert. I can say if you have not Jason's seen mom. Friday the 13th. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that's my list. I, you know, I had a couple more, but they're so obscure. I don't even want to talk about them. Yeah. And, um, and the reason I bring up the topic, because we try to think of a topic every week is. I write, and I don't. When I and Greg knows this too. Like every time I, I write something new, I like to try to put something at the end of it that just makes it go the other way. Greg knows I, I do it all the time. I never let the protagonist win. It's just something that I like to do. So I'm just like I'm a huge fan of movies with plot twists that you don't see coming. Right. Those are my favorite horror films. That are out there. Well, so, and I think that's what intrigued me with what we just did this last weekend. Yeah, which is very true. We yep. have one mm-hmm. of this. Yeah, we we definitely have yep. one of those. Um, so let me tell you about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Spoiler Here it comes. No. All right. Well, I think we're about the time to start wrapping this up. So uh, are we going to pimp out anything here? Greg plugs. Uh, if you want to see what I've been up to, which hasn't been much recently, go to Greg, the movie guy, dot blogspot dot com. Got a plethora, a plethora of movie reviews on there for you to check out. I'm hoping to get some new ones up there. I've got a list of movies that are in theaters now that I want to go check out. Um, we'll see if that happens this weekend. Otherwise, there's other movies in there to read. Go check them out. Uh, you can also check out the Midnight Frights Instagram at Midnight Fright Films. We have a bunch of new pictures loaded up on there from our shoot this weekend. Definitely check that out. Like them, comment on them. Tell us how awesome we are because we love hearing that. Go. Yeah, you can also find us on Facebook at Midnight Fright Films. The Midnight Fright Cast that could definitely use some love uh, on that page. And if nothing else, go visit us at MidnightFrightFilms.com. You will see all those stills that Greg was talking about as well on the on the website as well as, as, uh, well as a new blog that Patrick has posted. And uh, you can um, – there's a spot on there, I believe, that you can add comments, right? No. We do not have a comment section. We do not have a comment section on that one. I thought there was, so I lied. Do not go to our comment section because it doesn't exist. <laughs> if it existed, I'd say, hey, why don't you add your favorite uh, horror twist movies? Right. And let us know what uh, your favorite horror twist movies are. But it doesn't exist, so don't do that. Sometimes I'm afraid what people might put on there to talk about us. I would love to read that shit. Oh, that's true. Maybe we should put that back on. Yeah. There. Just moderate it. All right. Uh, And then for me, uh, like I said, we're wrapping up this weekend on a new short film called Ghost Hunter that's going to be playing at Prairie Lights Film Festival this October 20th. Uh, It's a little ways away. Yeah. 
Um, but we'll be plugging that. But we'll be plugging that several times over the course of the next few months. So uh, I just want to say uh, one of our next podcasts is probably going to be featuring some of the cast members and uh, crew members of Ghost Hunters. So yep. we can talk about that. So we probably won't be covering a movie during that time except our own. Yes. Because that's going to take a while to discuss. Yeah. So with that in mind, I think I'm about ready to sign off. So this is Patrick. Josh. And... Greg, the movie guy. And we're saying goodbye till next time. Peace out, Boy Scout. Adios. Adios.